In this video, you're going to learn how to add Harry Potter spells to your videos in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Alright, so here I am inside of DaVinci. So I have my footage here of my wizard, locked in a deadly duel obviously. So I'm going to select this, right click, and select new fusion clip. Now I just make sure my playhead is over it, and then go into the fusion tab. So if you want to make VFX inside of DaVinci Resolve, this is where you're going to want to do it. Fusion is insanely powerful. They actually used it on one of the Harry Potter movies. But don't worry, I'm going to keep things simple for this tutorial. So right now, we have two windows and two nodes. So the media in is our footage. The media out is like the final output. This is what we're going to see on the edit tab. So if I select the media one and hit one, that'll put it in this left viewer. If I select two, it'll put it in the right viewer. So if I hit play, you can see it's just our footage because we haven't added anything yet. So I'm going to select media pool and bring down this asset. So I got this magic spell asset from Production Crate. They have a lot of great magic assets and a ton of them are free, like this one. I'll put a link to it down in the description. So if we hit play, you can see it looks nice, but it's kind of starting too soon. We see she doesn't start swinging her wand until about frame seven, but it starts at the first frame. So what we can do is in the media one, you can see we have this global in and out slider. So if I grab between these two points and start dragging, then I can change when the clip starts from. I'm just gonna bring it so that this first number says seven. So how we can add this over our footage is we can click on this little square and drag out. That creates this little line. So if we put it over the square coming out from the media in one, that'll automatically create a merge node. A merge node basically takes two clips and puts them on top of each other. So now we have it in our footage. Let's put it in the right spot. So you see, I can't really move this around. We need to add another node to do that. So there are different ways to add nodes inside of Fusion. You can right click, insert tool, and add one of these here. Or a really quick and easy way is make sure that it's selected, hit shift space. That brings up the select tool menu. So I can type in any tool I want down here and it'll bring it up. So for this, I want the transform effect. And over to the side in the parentheses, you can see what you have to type to bring up that effect later. So I'm gonna hit enter. Now that adds the transform effect between the merge and the media in two. So in the transform, I can grab this and move our effect around. So let's just move it over to the tip of our wand. Now it's coming from the right place, but it's moving in the wrong direction. It should be going down like our wand. So we could play around with the angle, but then it starts moving our effect. That's because whenever you rotate the angle, it rotates from this little green X right here. That's called the pivot. So what we can do is take the pivot X and just drag that over until it's on our spell. So now if we change the angle or the size, it'll scale from that area. So now I can adjust it so that it matches our clip better. Now that's definitely better, but it's looking kind of flat. It should be coming towards us, not going straight down. So what we can do to add some perspective is making sure the media is selected, hit shift space and add a DVE node. So the DVE node is basically a fake 3D effect. So if you play around with the rotation, you can see it's moving it around like it's on a 3D card. And that's what we're gonna do to add the perspective. You can see it's doing it from the wrong place again. So we can take our pivot X and move it on the effect again. So now if you play around with the pivot Y, it'll give you a little bit more perspective. You can't push it too far because it'll start looking kind of flat, but you can use it to get a little bit more perspective in your effect. One thing we can do to make our effect pop more is add a soft glow effect. Then we can just bring up the glow size a bunch and bring down the gain a little bit. Makes it look brighter. What we can also do is type CC and that'll add a color corrector node. So what we can do if you want to change the color of your effect is play around with this hue slider. I think I'm going to make it something red. You can also play around with the saturation if you want. Now one thing we can do to make it look more realistic is in the merge, change the apply mode to screen. So now we have the spell over the footage, but it doesn't really look like it's there. If there was this huge light here, there should be some light being cast on her face. So let's make that. I'm gonna select the media in one, which is our original footage, copy and paste it up here. Just control C, control V, it's just like copying text. So again, I'm gonna merge this and bring that to the left viewer. So nothing should have changed. It's just the original footage merged over itself. But if we change the apply mode to screen, now it's a little bit brighter, but it's not the right color. So we can add another color corrector and bring it to the color that your spell is. Now it's the right color, but it's doing it over the whole screen. So what we can do is make sure the merge is selected and select this. That'll add a polygon. So now you can see it's just completely gone. So what we can do is start clicking and that'll add points. So you wanna do is start adding points around the area that you want the light to affect. And then to close the selection, you just hit your original point again. So now you can see it's only affecting this area here, but it looks absolutely terrible. So what we can do is bring up the soft edge until it starts looking good. 
Now that looks really nice for this frame. But if we go back one frame, well the light's gone but she's still being affected by it. So what we can do in the merge, we have this blend slider here. So that controls how strong the effect is. So what we can do is click on this diamond thing right here. That'll add a keyframe. So if we go back one frame, we can bring the blend down to zero. And that'll add another keyframe. So now you can see it's zero on this frame, but then it goes back to one on this frame. Then you can go a couple frames forward and then bring the blend back down to zero. That'll add another keyframe. So now between those frames, it'll animate between one and zero, making it look like the light is fading away. That looks a lot more realistic. So if you wanna make it look like she's blocking a spell, you can try using one of these shockwaves from Production Crate and then go through the same process as last time. Find the frame you want, drag it so that it starts on that frame, merge it over, put it in place with a transform. I think I'm gonna make this one a bit bigger. Now for this, we can actually copy our soft glow and color corrector and then paste them right here. So we can take the line out of the merge and plug it into the soft glow. Then we can take the output from the color corrector and bring that back into the merge. So now I'm gonna play with the color corrector until I get a color I like. And then in the merge, I'm gonna change it to screen. And then to add the lighting, I'm gonna go through the same process as last time. Now that you know the basics about compositing magic effects, you want to start leveling up your skills. And you can do that by checking out this video here, where I show you how to make the Doctor Strange magic shields.